and we are 26 minutes in and I'm just wondering how how in the world do these guys come back from such a catastrophic loss so I guess we'll find out already but. hello everybody welcome to beyond all reason AV8 on all the glitters which I know is a map everybody's seen before but it is a fantastic map and it's well played for a reason so i have a great ava today sent in by a viewer i'm not gonna disclose who that was but if you'd like to send in your own games send it through my email which can be found in my youtube about page or through discord uh, i am in uh the beyond a reason discord pretty easy to find me i'm all the way up there um but yeah this is a fantastic game um i know i've been casting a lot of pro games recently um but this is not like that. This is more of a regular old Joe game, which is perfectly fine by me. You know, you have to uh, sprinkle in the regular with the extraordinary. So we're going to see how regular people play this game. Uh, people that would play it more like I do, you know, but either way. So we'll do a little bit of a map breakdown. Wind speed, of course, zero or low of zero, sorry, high of 16. Um, so we are gonna be seeing some solar collectors, which I personally think is a mistake, but nobody asked me. Um, most people go for a few solar collectors and a few wind turbines. That's typically how things work out. It's not a terrible build order by any stretch of the imagination. Of course we have Mount the Himalayas, sorry, over here. Not a lot of resources, but very, very defensible. And of course, we also have the open plains down here as well, which is a great spot for, you know, attacking through. And where most of the map, or most of the game tends to be decided on this map, it seems like these uh, open plains lend themselves to uh, quite destructive battles, which is uh, always fun to see. Additionally, we also have a ton of reclaim here. As we can see, uh, rocks worth 24 metal abound. But again, these are, you know, your average player, maybe even less in some cases. So hopefully we're going to be seeing that reclaim reclaimed. But I don't have high hopes, and uh, neither should you. But that's okay, you know. It's not it's not game game ending, right? We have a few rovers being sent out here from Ganymedes, Meads, the uh, leading player on the Cool Colors team. And we also have some rascals sent out from BSR21. The leading player on the Worm Colors team, KKND646. Yeah, let's see what these rovers can do. Gonna be taking out... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was gonna say, gonna be taking out that mechs for sure, for sure. But uh, not quite able to do it there. They uh, aren't microed uh, very efficiently and they just move past it, which is always a little bit unfortunate to see. But uh, what are you gonna do, man, you know? And uh, they might just get taken out here. Oh no, construction vehicle. Yeah, the blitzes are going to be coming in, destroying these guys. But we do have uh, some rovers from ADHD. Nice nickname there. Going to be coming in here, hopefully doing some damage. Looks like he will actually be taking out a mechs there, which is fantastic. Sorry if we have some pauses here. I am, of course, a little sick. So I got a little bit of dry throat. Going to be refreshing that with some water. <coughs> Otherwise, it's going to be super gravelly <coughs> and not fun to listen to. So, we don't want that to happen, right? That would be cringe and boring. And this replay is long, man. It's over an hour, an hour and ten minutes, I believe. So, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for myself here, but I'm back in it. I'm ready to win it. All right. So, Viadia. Viadia. That's actually a nice name. It uh, rolls off the tongue. Going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe here with ADHD. My arch nemesis. No. Um, Viadia does have double the true score of 80. Um, however, they're both, you know, not super experienced there, so it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, Leech Shark going to be coming up here for Viadia a little quicker than ADHD's. Will it matter, though? They're going to both just be repairing their laser turrets as they do fire down. It looks like, yeah, 80s would have lost there if not for that brave blitz. And, of course, the D-gun by the commander there also would have just taken that out. And uh, we're starting to see some reclaim collect on the field now. We have Tick's pay bar. Yes, with the ping from Ganymedes. Uh, moving up relatively quickly as opposed to Aced, who is also moving up but not as defensively, not as with... He doesn't have as many units as Tick's pay bar does. So, uh, Tick's in a little bit better position to, you know, move a strike force through, attack, do some damage. 
We'll see how that goes. Ganymede's going to be lining up a row of laser towers here all the way at the front. Not even gathering these mechs quite yet. He just wants to establish this front line, which I think is, is not a bad idea at all uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And it, it leaves time for Heightened, who's a little bit behind right now, to uh, catch up to that front line. So I would say that's a good play, good decision there. A long-term strategy, one might even say. Yeah, Tick's going to be moving out some uh, Rocketeers here. Very nice. And yeah, great versus stack defense. Unfortunately, besides the stuff over here, which Tick's is probably going to want to move down here, there's not really any stack defense. Some laser showers all the way back here, but uh, if he just wants to push out, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they're not terrible. I, I think I take that back. There are some laser towers dotted around, and if he actually wants to do any damage to the mechs here, he would want to use those uh, those rocketeers here. So a little bit of skirmishing going on down here. Self-destruct for that commander from KKND, um, which uh, if you don't know what that is, basically you can self-destruct your commander for a little bit of extra metal, which uh, is helpful for people that are ecoing. So yeah, uh, Janus going to be ending the game with three kills there. Very nice. Nice job there. Stout also holding the line while the uh, artillery is going to be lobbing some shots down range. Very nice. Takes out that Rocketeer in the back. Pinpoint accuracy. Really proud of our guy there. I say we. I'm proud of him. <laughs> and uh, Ganymede is going to be going for a little bit of a flank here. We're actually just trying to back up, I guess, moving four blitzes right behind Tick's pay bar. Uh, Tix does notice, it looks like. Yeah, and there are some uh, rocket bots from Solo Drone here, as well as a Centurion from Tix. And uh, they're going to be messing this convoy up. Um, there are still two left, but uh, one is on very, very low health. It wouldn't surprise me if they do nab this mechs. But, um, yeah, one of them does go down through that little explosion there. The other one will die to this laser tower here. So, nice little attack there from Ganymedes. Draws takes away. He's actually going to be doing a little bit of a retreat. So, uh, yeah, Ganymedes pushing forward quite effectively. Good job there, man. All right, apologies. We had some technical difficulties there. All the sound cut out, which is always a fun thing to experience. But either way, we have some Brutes and a Riot Tank here from BSR21. Able to take out a Mechs and a Laser Tower at some cost of their own. A couple of incisors going down. Another Mechs going down for Ganymedes. And his commander's relatively low as well. Down to 28% health. Gonna want to be getting out of there as he does take even more damage. Hopefully he decides to do something. He doesn't have the energy to cloak or to degun, which is a never a good situation to find your commander, but he does manage to make it out of that. Very nice. A said pairing up to Spec. Spec with a pretty large uh, or decent army of blitzes here. Only a few laser towers to protect for A said. Uh, meanwhile, we have Viadia and ADHD 15 uh, going toe to toe here. Yeah, very, very nice. And what do we say? Hmm. Would we say this is maybe maybe the start of the middle game after the early game? I'd say. I think that's a good that's a good place to call it. So we do have some Janus's here going to. What am I gonna say? Toe to toe again with a couple uh, a brute and a riot tank. They do manage to go down there. They have super high damage but very weak health or very low health, I should say. Um, so not able to take that fight super effectively, but they do manage to dish out some damage. We have lots of artillery here um, from Viadia. How much? We have six, I can count. Six artillery, uh, light artillery pieces here, the shell shockers, pushing ADHD back. He's going for that missile truck meta strategy, I guess. Um, as well as, you know, we also have missile trucks back here for Viadia. So they are running the meta. Um, but, yeah, ADHD not quite able to, uh, yeah, protect his little defenses here. So he might have to just call it quits and push back a little bit, which does put Spec in danger. Spec 21 going to be going in with some artillery of his own against Aced, taking out those laser towers, and uh, yeah, Aced's going to want to be doing something. You only have a few maces there um, for units that are actually mobile. Takes pay bar with the help of Solo Drone, taking back this front line here. A few rocket bots going to be trying to take out these laser towers. Trying to push back against the Cool Colors team uh, incursion, I guess you'd call it. Meanwhile, BSR just holding the line as is Ganymedes. They're not, uh, you know, they've played their role for now. They're not too invested in uh, moving forward. I guess Ganymedes is moving some uh, Janus's around. Uh, gonna be trying to go where? Uh, a very interesting unit to flank with. High damage, I guess, so able to take out uh, targets quickly. But yeah, grabbing, uh, what, two mechs there? So not the biggest, uh, you know, attack in the world, but still, nonetheless. Um, we're starting to see air forces pop up for right to reclaim. 
I do not see any air units for our cool colored friends, which uh, might leave them vulnerable to bombing since I also really don't see any ants there in these bases either, so... Hopefully we see some uh, sneaky bombing runs <coughs> so that, uh, you know, the warm color team can claw themselves back a little bit. Uh, they are losing ground slightly. If we look at the eco, they're down about 30-ish metal, I would say. Maybe maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. And uh, going to be losing even some more as we do have Heighten going in here with a, a motley of units. We got Stouts for the front line, Artillery um, for that long-range damage, and of course Janus's and Missile Trucks. He's got everything, man. He brought all Armada vehicles to uh, to play here. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a good time. Tix Paybar being uh, pushed back. Not realizing the power of the D-Gun yet, I guess. Um, even though... Nah, he definitely knows. TS-20. Uh, I guess he just doesn't want to there. Nice little drawing there from uh, Ganymedes. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so we do have the bomber on here. From right to reclaim. Very, very nice. Going to be uh, trying to bomb the crap out of Acid's economy here. Taking out a few mexes. Uh, doesn't seem, yeah, they're just, they're just wandering around, man. Gonna be dropping bombs wherever it suits them. We do have advanced construction bots from all Humai, uh, coming out here, but he, uh, loses a lot of energy there. He is still, yeah, he's gonna start stalling energy slightly, um, but it's, you know, wind farms for him. He is tier 2 now, so it's not the biggest deal. We do have some light anti-air here, some archangels, as well as, uh, I think some thistles back there were, uh, nestle, nestles? Something. What, what am I blanking on? I have no idea. Um, but the bombers are going down, but uh, not without a bang. Going to be taking out another wind farm there. Poor cow god. That's why you space out your wind farms, guys. Look at uh, Sniffa here. They're not actually entirely spaced out for him either, but uh, I'd say this is the best example, actually, uh, of the there with uh, the spaced out wind farm. But yeah, so Lord Collector's going down, wind farm going down. Cow god is in the pits for energy right now. Um, only at plus 148, and uh, he's starting to get his tier 2 mexes up, so he's going to want that energy to be uh, quite solid as well. Um, looks like we did not see Haydn follow up on that attack, neither did Ganymedes. Um, so it is going to allow Tix Paybar and uh, Solo Drone to uh, kind of rally there, push back to their front line, but they are slowly losing that uh, mount engagement, as is A said there. Uh, Spec is slowly pushing forward as well, but I'm sure he's a little bit wary um, with AD's position here. He has a lot of beamers, all spaced very closely together there. Um, you know, if AD goes down, he can easily be flanked, which definitely doesn't want that to happen. Or not even flanked, like he could go around, but uh, maybe just going straight back to the bases there might even be the best idea. Who knows? Who knows? Time will tell. Time will tell. Looks like Ganymedes is going to be going in here. We do have some recluses there. The all-terrain rocket spider is going to be firing down on these Janus's here. Ganymedes loves his Janus's, man. And they're a very good unit, but uh, again, no health. They they can't take damage. Um, and I don't think it's the best unit just to push with by themselves. As uh, we can see here, they're easily being taken out and uh, can't really provide much resistance there. Um, so a little bit unfortunate uh, push there, but uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, Artie. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. Not quite. Not quite. Viadia here. Taking a little bit of damage. Um, and he is actually starting to lose here. He had a very, very good initial push. But uh, I guess the artillery wasn't quite enough. And uh, AD has held on to his position with the help of this nice little Overwatch tower. Uh, and of course the rocket bots. Or missile trucks, sorry. Taking out uh, his laser towers there. He's uh, doing a good job of it, man. So, props there. In terms of Air Force, do we, we still don't have any for these cool color guys. Very unfortunate. They should be building up anti-air at least. But, of course, you'd like to see Air Force. We do have an Arbalist back here. So, Julius uh, putting in work. But, yeah, I don't, I don't really see any anti-air for these cool color guys. So, we'll see if that comes into play again. Right to reclaim. Might not want to bomb again because he's just assuming that... Uh, they beefed up their defenses. I don't see him building any bombers. Well, might also be too expensive, but we do see Ganymedes going down there on the front line. BSR-21 does take him out. Uh, nice walling here, but it was not quite enough to, uh, yeah, stall that push, I guess. It's okay. We forgive him. We forgive him. And yeah, these, uh, these mountain spiders, man, they're deadly. They're dangerous. Yeah, they take out those Janus's, which would have done a ton of damage to BSR, but again, like, the... <sighs> Yeah, they don't have the health there. They need uh, Ganymedes and these frontline units to protect those Janus's, man. Yeah, he's just pumping them out. This is one of the weirdest strategies I've ever seen. I can't even lie. Uh, 
yeah, it's it's very very odd indeed. And uh, it might actually be the cause of losing that front line, but holy cow. Viadia has uh, definitely rallied here. Tons of shell shocker artillery. Also lots of missile trucks there. And yeah, I don't see how AD is uh, going to not be pushed back at this point. He's going to be trying to make a gun like here, which is actually not a terrible idea. You know, try to win the Artie War, but I think it's uh, it's too far gone. Unless Viadia does just sit back here, but uh, he's not prone to do that, at least from what I've seen this game. So, yep. Yeah. That's rough. ADHD's commander does go down. That means the artillery goes down as well. Most of the units he had. That whole front line basically uh, going down. And uh, oh, now the missile trucks are coming in. Yeah, this is like the most meta build I've seen uh, from like a newer player in a, in a long time. So props. Uh, you know, there's a reason the meta is the meta. because it's, it's good. And uh, we've seen that here from uh, AD being pushed back there. So yeah, missile trucks, they, uh, they're good. They're good, man. I love getting these little, I wouldn't call them cinematic shots, but uh, you know, a little nice, a little nice no UI shot. It's fun to see the planes flying in the background. And yeah, Spec has not made as much progress as I thought he had, or as I thought he would have. Like, he actually seems to be uh, just sitting here defensively, which is pretty interesting. I guess the mountains do cut both ways. It's hard to uh, push through them as well. Um, but with having less resources, and Ace had already... Okay, there are some stouts back here. My bad. Yeah, these stouts back here are absolutely wrecking Ace Head's base. And now it's time, I think, for Spec to just fully go in. Uh, commit to this push here. Maybe wrap, wrap around behind Viadia. He seems to be the most uh, menacing player on this Cool Colors team, uh, for sure. And uh, Janus is out here for Ganymede's classic Ganymede's move there. It's huge overkill on those rockets. But hey, man, it looked cool. So, uh, you know... What are you going to do? But yeah, also huge uh, self-destruction damage. Because that uh, AoE there from the Janus's is uh, going to be quite destructive as it were. Stouts from Spec, yeah, are going to be uh, targeting Viadia at this point. They are, they are a little war-weary. They've taken damage. Um, but looks like they might actually nab this uh, advanced construction bot, which would be very, very nice for the war effort for sure. Does take him out. Not before he builds Tier 2 mechs, but still. Uh, Mauser's now coming out and Jaguar Lightning tanks for Viadia. So yeah, extremely meta build with uh, these long range units, but uh, the stouts are still going to mess him up, man. That uh, tier 2 mechs does go down. Oh, Humai might come in with a clutch here, a nice D-gun, but uh, not sure if that's what he's planning or not. Yeah, he has built anti-air, so that's good. It's all pretty light anti-air, but still, yes, nice D-gun from him there. A uh, little surprise attack there, never hurt anybody. It actually did, but uh, it hurts your enemies, so that's a good thing. Lots of gauntlets today. Um, another gauntlet out here from Hightend. I don't know why I said it like that, but yeah. Uh, he's going to be, yeah, just trying to push into that uh, little area there. Judo missiles are going to start to come out here, but uh, we don't really see, we didn't see a lot of, like, tick or scout play um, currently, so not going to be effective or anything. Also, no mines. Uh, missile drugs coming out for Ganymedes now. He's uh, abandoned the Janus's, I guess. And uh, Viedia does push up. Hopefully he's going to be gathering a lot of this reclaim here, because there is a lot of reclaim, man. But, uh, yeah, 1.6k. Some of it's all the way out here, which uh, isn't, you know, super, super uh, easy access. But still, I imagine there's at least 400 easy reclaim there. And uh, that bomber gets super taken out. And, uh, yeah, right to reclaim just isn't building bombers anymore, which uh, I guess there is sufficient anti-air now. He'd have to build a lot. And I get some good use out of them as well. Azar coming out for BSR 21. Classic unit. Azars are fantastic, man. I don't want to say one of my favorite units because uh, they are a dirty Cortex unit, but still, very, very nice. You can see the Battle of the Titans here. Starlight versus Azar. And uh, probably gets taken out by a Brute there, actually. <laughs> he didn't have quite the front line to uh, sustain that. But nice push here from Spec 21. Coming in with those stouts there against the missile trucks. And yeah, really able to mess him up because uh, the missile trucks were not microed backwards. Going to be trying to slip around, maybe even grab the commander, um, but they're at least going to be doing damage to these hounds as well. So a uh, good push there from spec. Hopefully he did not overcommit with the hounds in the back here from uh, Sniffa. <laughs> they are able to uh, push in there at least a little bit, get some damage in. Meanwhile, we have the missile trucks from Ganymedes, of course, going to be trying to uh, push back against BSR, who has deployed some uh, beholders here. Which is uh, pretty interesting. You don't normally see those, so I'm actually super happy to. This is from a TS-16 player. Not the most common strategy. 
I'm not sure if they're even necessary, but still. And uh, yeah, these missile trucks are getting messed up by this Zar back here. Taking out a ton of these guys, up to 16 kills, 21 kills. He gets like at least 4 kills a shot. Got two nice right there. The Howlands, unfortunately, are too much for BSR's army, though. And the Cool Colors continue their march forward as Spec goes in the opposite direction. So a little bit of a, a yin and yang here from them. Uh, very nice to see there. And yeah, Spec is going to be moving forward with these, uh, with the Shell Shockers, with the Blitzes in the back. And yeah, he has a very, very cost-effective flanking strategy, able to take out Aced's commander. And uh, yeah, this Tier 2 Bond Lab, I'm assuming, is also going to be going down there. He's going to try to uh, to bring that thing down, and it does go down there. So very, very nice. So Spec's teammates are having a rough go of it on the plains there, but he's able to push through the mountains relatively well. Uh, Aced is, is dead, basically, as a uh, construction bot building from a construction lab but oh he has no um income except for one max so yeah that's gonna do it for him it looks like so i guess the first kill of the day and he's a relatively uh, experienced player uh, in terms of this lobby so uh, not not exactly who we want to see go down um but as long as viadi is still alive they have a chance right <laughs> no this guy's been killer and look at that 5.3 reclaim on the on the map right here and I bet you he's not going to reclaim it, which is super, super unfortunate. I think the biggest area everybody can improve in, um, even for me. So my last video, um, where I was critiquing myself, which was a great video. Um, I actually really enjoyed making that one. Is I actually wasn't reclaiming. So I did well, but I could have been doing a lot better. So we do have Ganymede's going here for the reclaim. Thank goodness somebody uh, is going to be doing that. So uh, nice. Uh, very, very good. He's going to be boosting his metal income uh, significantly, up to almost 200 metal income, and I'm sure a ton of that is from the reclaim. It's it's hard to tell. I wish there was a breakdown of that, but uh, yeah, too bad, I guess. The Mauser is going to be coming out here from uh, Gany Meats as well. Actually, just a pretty well-rounded army. That's not true. He doesn't have frontline units, but whatever. A ambassadors, Starlights, uh, Mausers, and of course, Missile Trucks, the Tier 1 units. So, yeah, going to be beating on this Zar, who has 53 kills. And uh, they're not easy kills either, so this man's been doing fantastic work. But, uh, yeah, BSR's commander also taking huge damage. Looks like he might just go down there from Mauser fire, but uh, does, ooh, does manage to just barely escape, I think. Ambassador Rocket also coming out there. Yeah, I, this man definitely wants to cloak, but uh, he's he's not doing it for some reason, which, uh, yeah, never a good thing there. Also, the tick push from uh, Julius, even putting pressure over here just because there's no static defenses, which is always uh, interesting to see that. Yeah, doing a little bit of tick damage, as it were. Spec trying to uh, break through uh, Vietti's lines. Seems to be doing relatively well. Vietti might even go down here. Down to 12% and he does make it out of that, just barely. And yeah, this push here is uh, doing incredibly well, man. BSR is uh, not having the greatest time. Moving uh, some Tigers out of the shop now. Zars are too expensive, I guess, uh, which is definitely the case. So yeah, again, we're trying to uh, push back this, this army with no frontline units. And Tigers actually do relatively well there. Yeah, taking a lot of damage. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, Tiger's able to uh, to fight back against the missile trucks, the starlights, the Mausers, and he sh his base should be safe for now. Uh, we'll see what happens later. Uh, gunship's also coming out for right to reclaim, so no bombers for him, but he is going to be doing the gunship route, uh, which I don't like as much. But uh, it's a little late for bombers now anyways. Uh, 23 minutes. He does have easy air superiority because there's no other aircraft really. That's not, I mean, Kalga does have some stuff coming up there, but it's it's a little bit late for sure. Um, and unless Right to Reclaim's base is taken out or something, he's probably going to be holding on to that advantage for the rest of the game, unless he, you know, rests on his, laure rests on his laurels, as it were. Which is actually a, a pretty common cause of, uh, I'd say not defeat, but uh, making games a lot closer than they need to be. Uh, but missile trucks, I forgot, actually have pretty decent anti-air. Uh, their missiles are able to lock on to air units and uh, deliver almost full damage, I think, uh, to those air units. So, yeah, very nice. But there's still uh, enough gunships for those uh, dang ticks uh, for now. For now, yeah. I'd like to see some, uh, some small sack defense to stop this uh, tick push from Julius. Um, outflowing from uh, these five bases here. 
is uh, always super, super frustrating, man. I don't know why I said it like that, but uh, it is, it is. The, the line of sight units that are actually doing damage in the late game is wild, it's crazy. Um, we now have Razorbacks out at uh, 24 minutes in. Always good to see. I would say we're now in the late game definitively. I tend to uh, define late game as when we start seeing gantries coming out. Middle game is, is tier 2 stuff. Um, and early game, of course, is uh, that tier 1 garbage. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Uh, Razorback, 41 kills. I'm sure a lot of those are from ticks. Um, but, I'm, just, you know, he did some good damage up here uh, as well, I'm sure. I wish we also got to see the damage numbers that they did. I mean, kills are important, but, uh, yeah. Another way. And uh, Spec actually finally being pushed back here. Cow God with quite the army, making sure Spec doesn't try anything silly going through these mountains here. Um, so yeah, this man's done very, very well. Uh, he's been very, very aggressive this game, but uh, hasn't been quite enough for him. We do have the takes coming out here and the Starlights as well from Heightened. And uh, takes pay bar. His base is uh, feeling the hurt, as it were. So he does lose that tier two. Losing construction turrets left and right. Advanced lower collectors. All that jazz. Never good to see. And uh, Solo Drone trying to uh, make some fat boys in the back here, but that uh, not going to be super effective. Anti-nuke is coming up. I don't see any nukes. That's not true. That's not true. Apocalypse here from uh, Anik 100. Doesn't quite have a missile yet, but I could definitely see a nuke turning around this game, especially heightened space up here, but there is an anti-nuke there as well. Yeah, there's no good nuking spots, actually. Maybe if you were to get one right here, get some blast radius over here. Um, do some damage there, but that's kind of it. There's not a... Yeah, it's not easy pickings, that's for sure. And the Starlights and the Ambassadors are just absolutely having their way with uh, Tix, Pavar, and Solo Drone's bases there. Nothing to really uh, defend against those guys. And we are 26 minutes in, and I'm just wondering how, how in the world do these guys come back from such a catastrophic loss? So I guess we'll find out, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a, definitely an interesting game so far. Does not seem to be going well uh, for our poor guys in warm. That sounded weird. Should I say like sweaters because they're warm? Or should I say the cool color guys have sweaters because they're cold? But then if they don the sweaters, they would no longer be cold. Speaking of sweaters, you can buy your Beyond no Reason official merch at... No. <laughs> I did actually buy a Beyond no Reason... Uh, what are those called? Crewnecks. Very nice, very comfortable. I do have uh, a problem actually with the way the logo is on there. And you see it with a lot of uh, indie merch companies or like YouTuber merch where they put the logo in the center of the shirt or the center of the sweater, which is a big no-no. should actually be upper chest region if you have, uh, you know, those long, you know, elongated horizontal logos like that. But it's still very nice. I wear it because I'm a big nerd. But uh, yeah, what are you going to do? So Bulls out here from uh, Viadia. Absolutely uh, having their way with the battlefield here. Actually, not quite. Uh, Dragon's Claw doing a little bit of damage, but also Bulls from ADHD. Uh, you know, he's coming back into the game. We have the Sheldons actually out from Anik 100, which could definitely turn the tide of the battle. Sheldons are very, very cost effective. And what you need when you're losing is cost effectiveness. So, yeah, we can see the absolute. Uh, how these guys are like all the way in the back here, having not a good time at all. And uh, how are they going to come back from that? I, I honestly have no idea. I, I was thinking for the nukes to uh, do something, but maybe they just eco better or the gantry units uh, slip by or there's some nice air raid, but I've, I just, I don't know. There's a lot of potential options, but uh, they seem very, very weak right now. If we're looking at the economy, they uh, it's about a 150 metal difference. Um, Sheldon's here. Nice little burst fire there. <laughs> Try and take out this uh, nasty anti-air vehicle. But uh, they're going to have to worry about these turtles. Amphibious tank on the uh, landlock map, as it were. Very interesting choice there. But uh, turtles aren't terrible by themselves. Uh, not at all. I'd say they're a, a bit of a worse bull, maybe. Now, I don't know if that's fair. I haven't really done enough of a comparison to, set, to say. Uh, Spec 21 going down there, uh, as commander at least. And we only have three commanders left for the Warm Colors team, uh, which checks out. They only have uh, about five players left. Uh, BSR's commander, Mike, he looks uh, pretty vulnerable, but uh, the aggression has definitely uh, stopped somewhat. 
And this area is actually relatively clean from enemy forces, which might allow it to be, uh... Oh gosh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Might allow it to be reclaimed there. Yeah, 11,000 reclaimed there. Um, is not nothing, and you might want to just go grab that. But I haven't seen anyone from Warp Colors team uh, reclaim anything, which is uh, pretty unfortunate. Took out Ace Head early, but their tech is teched well, which is definitely fair. Yeah, Spec 21 was definitely, I wouldn't say the carry, but he did very, very well. Uh, the only player on the, the Warp Colors team to really push forward, uh, but now he is going down here, unfortunately, to these nasty hounds from Ulkumai. Big ol' nuke there from Anik, uh, which is pretty nice, but, uh, yeah, not able to take out the economy, which is the important part there. Uh, looks like a big old wind farm does go down there, and we're starting to see players drop from the Warm Colors team as they, uh, realize the beginning of the end, but still, we have four, uh, what, 40 minutes left? Not 40 minutes, did I lie? How do I do math? Yeah, 40 minutes. Another nuke from Anik. Going to be taking out uh, Ganymede's uh, little army there. I mean, nice value from these nukes. 32 kills with that bad boy. 44 with that one. Um, and they're good kills too, but still, they're not doing economy damage, which is a big problem. We have another Thorak here from KKND. I say another. It's the only one I've seen. But he is going down there after getting 44 kills. So again, nice number of kills. Probably got the metal back from that. Um, but still, like... It's it, you're fighting a losing war. If your value is even and your economy is worse, you're gonna lose a game. Your value has to be better. Um, Strat bombers over here from right to reclaim. Gonna be bombing uh, this little hound pawn or hound grunt army. Apologies. Um, but is it enough? Like, ideally you'd want the strap bombers on someone's base, but uh, from that iner initial uh, bomber attack, there might be too much anti-air. I don't see a ton though. Uh, Anti-nuke systems coming to play. Anik will slowly realize that uh, everybody has has nukes now. So got nuked twice in a row. Indeed, yeah. The craters killed his poor army, man. How could Anik nuke them in oblivion? They didn't even get a fair fight, man. These guys up here did some fighting, but uh, the rest of them died dishonorably. So they won't be going to heaven, which is a pretty unfortunate. But what are you gonna do? That's the way the game is played. Uh, man, let's have a cure from Anik. Uh, establishing front line against these dang annoying ticks, man. They're going to be... Oh my gosh, she is turning these guys out. So Anik has an insane economy, it looks like. Yeah, Anik and KKND have quite a good economy, but uh, will it be able to save them? In terms of the whole game, they have a worse economy, though, which is the problem. You have to look at things in game terms. You know, in uh, the broadest context you have, if you're making broad generalizations, like who's going to win, who's going to lose. They might win on their individual fronts, but when they're being double teamed, you never know. Hound's getting way too close here from all Humai, and this uh, Thor is racking up the kills, man, up to 18 there, which is pretty nice. A little cloak commander there, it's interesting. Another Thor coming out, and the Mammoths are waddling forward, trying to establish some sort of front line there. Catapult bots, bots in the back, actually just one guy. Bombing the crap out of uh, these guys up here and the uh, strap bombers as well. Trying to do some damage, but uh, we have a ton of shredders here from Vayadia. He's not taking any crap from right to reclaim. Which, yeah, if there's bombers, build anti air. Ground anti air is always going to be more cost effective than uh, anything you can put in the sky. Uh, and that goes for ships or for land units, except maybe against dragonfly and fortresses, but I would still say Anti-Air is probably more or similarly cost-effective. Uh, I haven't done the calculations, but yeah. I have for ground Anti-Air against like fighters and stuff, bombers. Low health units, but dragons can uh, take a bit of a beating, especially compared to every other air unit. Another nice nuke from Anik. They're absolutely wiping out that entire army there. Is this how they come back? They just nuke the crap out of all these armies just sitting on their borders? It's not a bad idea, and you get a ton of value that way. Um, until someone decides to make mobile anti-nuke, but these are newer players, of course, so we'll see if they uh, figure that out. Uh, Ace said, might be going down here again, man. Uh, but this time to right to reclaim with a bunch of strap bombers. And yeah, the strap bombers plus the roughneck gunships going to be coming out here. Um, we don't really see any great bombings happening there. They try to take down these uh, tier 2 maxes, but they're not even able to do that. Do get some damage here on all Humai's base. But uh, he has relatively good anti-air. Some of Mercury's there and, uh, and the like. 
yeah, they're going to be trying to uh, kill these guys, but they have a pretty long reload. Uh, Arbalist there trying to clutch up, but yeah, Olkumai might be going down here. As that Aphus is uh, ticking closer to becoming a time bomb, yeah, right inside that base. So Olkumai's down, Ace Head took a bit of damage there. Um, so the cool colors are losing players. Yeah, it, it did happen with those bombers and gunships, so nice there. Unfortunately, the Juggernaut is out. Uh, for this cool colors team and if he gets to the front line man, he's gonna start dishing out damage like the front line is here The juggernaut really just I mean if BSR 1 goes down I'd say the game is probably over at that point like he has to walk right over there and uh, and die and the game is basically over so It'll be interesting, but the juggernaut seems to be uh, trying to head off these Thors which also makes a ton of sense uh, so yeah, two Thors here from uh, KKND, which we haven't really seen a lot of this game, but he is trying to clutch up in the late game here. Uh, I think he was the eco player, so it makes sense. Another Thor coming out in the back, and two Thors on the front line. So yeah, both these guys, Anik and uh, KKND, uh, both have insane economies. And these nukes, uh, one with 131, one with 44. So this guy uh, could launch, I think, at that point. Bombers being built up back there. Thor's trying to take out some of these welders, but yeah, it's the it's the fight of lightning, man. That's for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Thor taking uh, kind of a bit of a beating for these welders here, man. More than you'd expect from just a regular uh, tier two unit, but uh, they also do get paralyzed there, uh, which yeah is definitely a thing that happens. So, is this new? I think that's new. That little paralyzer beam from the Thor that that did not used to be there, or I'm insane. Um, but yeah, I guess you don't have to use your EMPs uh, from the Thor to uh, stun people now, which is pretty good. I'm glad they're buffing Armada Tier 3 Gantry because they're always a bit weaker, which I'm okay with, um, you know, compared to like Cortex and make Juggernauts, but I feel like they, they want something, and the Thor is, is that unit. Uh, pretty unique, cool unit, um, like a, ja a Jaguar and Steroids, so nice to see them getting a little bit of a buff. Or I'm insane, and they've always had that. But I've been playing for years now. Like, is there a way I did not notice this? Probably. I learn new things every day. It's part of living. I, I love learning. Yeah. Three Razorbacks back here from Ganymedes, as well as a little Bull contingent and some uh, Jaguars out front there. Going to be snaking their way around. Yeah, we can see Solo Drone has a uh, rebuilt here. So I was right in uh, thinking that you know them having this area would be useful, but uh, it might just be all for naught as they're taken out here. But goodness, man. 646 run down the middle here. Ace Head's commander going down. These Marauders are tough, man, as well as the Thor, of course. Uh, Juggernaut able to, yeah, those two Thors did end up dying, but it's not looking good. I'd say at least send one Juggernaut to the front. Put pressure up here. Otherwise, you're if you're removing the fight down here as a cool color team, that's bad for you. So establish some sort of fight up in the front here, and then you can, you know, try to deal with this stuff back here. But if you're not moving the fight up there, you're just going to be continually harassed, and uh, you don't want those uh, warp color teams to get any sort of map control, as their economy is going to uh, skyrocket. They're going to be a lot safer. Their bases are not going to be able to, uh, you know, they're not going to be in danger. They're going to have more room to expand. It's going to be all around bad news for Bonzos. And we do have uh, sharpshooters back here. Sharpshooters, radar bots, classic pairing. Going to be a try and take out those marauders, although it seems like the waves have kind of stopped. Yeah, again, so now these guys are going to the front line. So by establishing the fight up here, um, you're moving enemy forces towards this front line, which is where you want them. You want them on the front line, away from your bases. Uh, also, nice Vanguard cannon position from Viadia. This man's had insane plays like this whole game, so really proud of that. Uh, Juggernaut moving back here. We got both jugs back there. I would say is a huge miscalculation. It might even cost them the game. Uh, another Juggernaut coming out here. Hopefully he does move up to the front line there. I'd love to see that. Uh, Titan out here from Heiden, but we can see he just has nowhere near the presence the Juggernaut has. And he's going to be going down there. Unfortunately, does not hit the self-destruct button on his way out. So a little mini explosion there instead of a, a larger one. More Thors and uh, more Otters moving down the front line. It looks like this Juggernaut is just going to be used to try to take those guys out. If he gets to the front line, that's another win. But this is the new front line, basically. As the Warm Close team are pushing out. Somehow they made it this far, man. Somehow they survived. Uh, they have they have four players. Spec, BSR, 21, and the two Juggernauts of Indy and Anik. And, of course, Solo Drone back here. But uh, he's kind of just trying to stay alive. 
uh, not really contributing to the front line yet. So we'll count him when he uh, starts putting units out, if he ever does. He's a he's a easy pickings, and I actually don't know how Ganymedes was taken out there when he was uh, snaking his way into that base. But he was, it seemed. And yeah, the Thors are making it so far, man. I mean, they pushed all the way down here. It's pretty impressive. I mean, the Marauders pushing down here is impressive too, but these guys had already been hit pretty hard by bomb raids and the, even just the early game, uh, stopping that snowball that they could have had a lot sooner. Um, but pushing against, like, fully developed players that really didn't take too much damage uh, the whole game is, is pretty impressive after, you know, losing big fights there. But, yeah, Solo Drone dying to Ticks here, which is pretty unfortunate. So, yeah, the Welders, great units against Ticks, but you have to use them, and, yeah, uh, construction turrets also going down there. That's all the build power, and it's just it's feeling bad for Solar Drone, but it's not a huge deal, I guess, right? I already thought he was entirely out of the game, but he is not quite yet. The Vanguards even split, man. Viandia is insane, man. This guy's he knows what he's doing. He's establishing a little defensive positioning up there is is great to see. Uh, quite a few Razorbacks coming out, as well as backed by Thor. Even some more Razorbacks. They're going to be trying to go toe to toe with these Marauders. Uh, 1v1, Razorback wins, easy, no contest, um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot more of these guys, and Juggernauts are better than the Titans, right? For the viewers, uh, yes, easily, Juggernauts are, are insanely better, it's not even close. Two anti-nukes there, uh, two, uh, you know, Mayor's two nukes there. So we do have a uh, anti-nuke out here, I was gonna think, I would thought it would be mobile anti-nuke, but it is just static anti-nuke, which is a pretty, pretty nice play there, but yeah, no more nuking of armies. Unless uh, you do decide to nuke over here, which is definitely a possibility, but that front line is not as good, um, or not as active as this one was, for the most part, for the most part. And uh, he says raid, uh, again he means stayed up there. So if that's what he's going to be trying to do, a Thor, a Razorback, four Bulls, and a Jaguar, man. This guy's all the anti-air they have. <laughs> Razorback's actually not terrible anti-air, but he's trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Titan, and of course that's not going to work. So yeah, two Titans out here from Indy. Indy's done a lot with those Thors, but now he is going for some Titans. Actually, don't know who wins Titan v. Thor anymore. I believe it's still Titan. Um, and, but, you know, two Titans obviously takes out a Thor. Easy. Easy win. No contest. Yeah, Thor does go down, but not before he launches a nasty EMP, which is going to be sending four Mammoths, which is not a bad pick at all. But, uh, yeah, they will be uh, coming too relatively soon. Titan out here from Viadia. Yeah, I think a Titan does take out a Thor. They're definitely more expensive, so I'd imagine that would be the case. They all are, are of course, a heavy assault mech. Oh, regular assault mech, dang. They don't they don't get the heavy uh, modifier, unfortunately. <laughs> Titan does go down there for Viadia. He does his best, but not quite able to make it through. And yeah, this is a super scrappy game, man. They are doing their best to hold. They are doing their best, and uh, it's a good job. They're, they're making a good effort. Kragoness here making their way through the mountains. These are your guerrilla fighters. I wish these guys were better because they're so cool. They're such a cool concept. Uh, spiders with uh, auto firing rockets or automatic rocket firing is insane. But uh, they don't have a lot of health. They don't have a lot of damage. I think they sacrifice a lot of their cost for that ability to just walk over anything and everything, which is a good ability, but still unfortunate. Also, they have good anti air. So. You know, they're, they're a good, they're an all-arounder for sure, but they kind of suffer, they're not super useful because they they suffer in a lot of categories. Only specific maps like this one, are they are they any good? Which is, I think is fair. I think it's fair to have some units benefit from certain terrains. I think that actually makes the game pretty healthy. If every unit was useful everywhere, then you wouldn't even be making decisions at that point. So, a Thor really getting uh, the beat down here. <laughs> Uh, but almost taking out that Titan before he goes down, but not quite. Actually should have been moving towards the Titan. So when he did have his death explosion, it would take out the Titan with him. Maybe. Or he could do a control detonation. We now have some uh, raiders back here. The sprinters from uh, Sniffa. Almost use his full name, but I, I'm, I am stupid, but I'm not that stupid. Right? So uh, they're going to be taking out Solo Drone. They're going to try. This Ape is still trying to go up, man. Insane that that guy's not dead yet. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the end for him, man. 
He's rebuilt his construction turrets, but uh, it's not quite enough for him. So, poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah, the front line is really stalled for these cool color players. Uh, we're still seeing some action here with Razorbacks uh, from uh, Old Humai, as well as, of course, those sprinters back there getting some damage done. So, yeah, hopefully these guys are going to be trying to come across here, do a little bit of damage back there, maybe even get around back, although there are uh, quite a few Pulsars, so they're not going to make it through that. But the Cool Colors team is uh, definitely warier now. I think they, they smelled blood in the water initially, maybe 10 minutes ago, and then they realized, uh, yeah, their their prey wasn't quite dead yet, and they still have a lot of fight in them. So it's it's a fantastic game, man. So this is what I was saying in the beginning, right? I know a lot of people like to hype up games, myself included. You have to do it for YouTube. But this is honestly one of the most insane games I've seen. Like, the ability for these guys to hold out for this long is wild. Um, and do it well with some fun action and not just do the stupidity of uh, these guys down here. So it's good to see. I'd say one of the one of the wildest comebacks I've seen. Not not quite the wildest, but I'd rank it definitely top three. Definitely top three. It's a fantastic game so far. And uh, Razorbacks trying to go ham on this Titan, but uh, it's not not quite enough there. Yeah, even more Razorbacks trying to move forward here. Thor's as well. Just trying to get into somebody's base, doing some damage. Um, but they're, all their attempts have failed so far. EMP's coming out from Thor's, but they, they need to keep moving, keep going forward. It's so frustrating seeing them target enemy units. Like, do, do eco damage, right? BSR going down would be huge. This guy is a huge meat shield. He's taking so much damage for this whole game. And to see him still alive is, is wild there. Um, tons of construction airplanes building uh, some on-the-spot pulsars, which is a fantastic idea. When you see big, chunky units moving through, you need some big, chunky lasers to, to uh, you know, tank him down. So, yeah, the Thor push did not work in the end. And look at all this reclaim here. Unfortunately, uh, we do have some reclaimers from Spec. So, huge props to Spec there. I sounded like uh, I was in puberty there. Nice voice crack there from myself. I'll blame it on being sick, okay? It's not my fault. And we all know I'm too cool to uh, voice crack on purpose, right? Or an accident. Oh my gosh. BSR21 left the game. I guess he had to leave. Um, it's not like he was losing or anything. Uh, nice nuke there from Manic. Still trying to do something with those nukes, man. But, uh, yeah, is he able to do it? Is he able to, uh, you know, hold out? With BSR down... And nobody taking his uh, units there is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, that's so weird that he just went down there. It must have been network issues or he just had to leave. This game has been going on for 46 minutes at this point, so it's not surprising they'd have to go, you know, someone would have to leave eventually, right? Another new Kremanic there, trying to get rid of these Juggernauts. But yeah, three Juggernauts on the front line. Really going to be uh, buttering your toast, as they say. Do they say that? I say that. And you should too. Another nuke there from Manic. Just missing all these sprinters. I don't know what he's trying to hit over there. Nice juggernaut going down. Two jugs here. Oh gosh, one does go down, and we can see that explosion. That's what I was saying. Like, just get a juggernaut in there and just have them die, and you do insane damage. Yeah, another jug going down, taking out that fusion reactor. BSR is toast at this point. If he wasn't already out of the game, sprinters trying to come in from this back entrance here. Uh, Rattlesnakes trying to shoot him down. As well as the, uh, you know, some uh, trashiness just sitting over here. Some tigers, Razorbacks, able to uh, get those guys down. And the front line is stabilized yet again. It looked like these guys were going to go down, but uh, not quite. So Spec has two of the three, 230,000 reclaim is absolutely insane, by the way. Anyways, sorry, sidetracked. So Spec with one uh, commander cloaked over here, another one over here that's also cloaked. I uh, wonder if he's going for the D-Gun or something. Uh, getting means he's getting anti-nuke. Yeah, you need mobile anti-nuke, man. Huge thing uh, in the late game there. So another nuke from Manic. Right on the edge of that uh, anti-nuke circle, which, by the way, I think with the two videos ago, we were discussing if you could see the anti-nuke circles, and you can in-game. Uh, you can see enemy ones. As long as you, I think, as long as you spot at the anti-nuke, you're able to see that uh, radius there. Because I'd hate to see one of my viewers cheating uh, with because it was a send and replay. And the guy seems uh, like a pretty cool guy. And uh, he didn't seem like he was a cheater to me at all. 
Um, and it, in fact, he was not, so good to see that. Anyways, yeah, Juggernaut's down here, tons of metal contributing to this insane reclaim, right? So 171 reclaim is wild. 172 at this point. And uh, Specs Commander does go down there, unfortunately. So two commanders left for the Warm Colors team, man. They're going to have to be careful of those commanders because uh, I won't go down without a fight. And a fight indeed, man. If we look at the economy, it's skyrocketing towards the Cool Colors. It looked like the Warm Colors might be coming back, but uh, now it's looked like the Pendulum is swinging in the opposite direction. They had a good initial push there, but they have started to stall a little bit. And even more sprinters coming in there. They are taken out by something. What was that? A mine? No idea. Oh, that was a commander going down. Oh my gosh, there's one commander left for the Warmer Clutch team, and he's all the way out here. Spec, what are you doing? What, what's going on back here, man? Oh man, I hope he realizes he's the only commander. Yeah, we need him. Yes, for sure. If that guy got spotted by like some random tick, that would be like the worst way to end this game. I'd be so upset. Not genuinely upset. I'd just be a little sad. And look at these uh, guys firing down all the way over here. Um, but Marauders coming in back in the back door now from Olkumai. They are going to suffer more against these Pulsars than uh, those Raiders ever did. So, yeah, watch out for that. Thor trying to make his way in here. But, yeah, these Pulsars are nasty, man. One of the best uh, sack defenses in the game. Even though they're not, like, a bulwark or anything cool like that, their laser is super, super deadly. And that Thor uh, managed to stun some guys up here, which is pretty nice. And uh, we are calling in the air support from uh, Gametes. Ganymedes, sorry. Thinking of what? Gametes are from what? Biology? Some part of uh, something? Yep, I'm a scientist, as you can tell. Thank you very much. I've written 15 published papers. Where is the air support? <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's no gunships for this whole team. Good, I'm proud of them. Gunships are terrible. <laughs> I have a personal vendetta against them. I even have a bigger personal vendetta against leaving Juggernauts just sitting back here. is is horrible. Um, I guess he's he's waiting for the fourth one to catch up. I have no idea. But send him out, man. Send him out to the front line. Let him get damage in. Because now it even looks like the Worm Colors are rallying yet again, man. That's wild. Uh, nice dragon back here. Trying to uh, get rid of these sprinters, it seems. Yeah, a couple of them. Uh, nice nuke there from Manic. Grabs him. Does do huge damage to that dragon, but he would, he would have been taking damage anyway from those sprinters, so not a terrible uh, thing for them to die that way. Or for him to take damage for their death. And uh, sitting on top of that mountain here, or no, in this little corner back here, like near the other people's bases, is actually kind of a good idea. In the sense that they think the commander's over here. But, um... That's actually back here. If they keep nuking top left, they'll reach bedrock. Actually, though, yeah, terrain deformation is one of my favorite things ever, which is why there's some really, really fun games that look like they're being developed coming out soon. I say soon, not soon, but they will be coming out um, that are Supcom uh, types. Uh, I guess total annihilation types, right? Got to bring them back to the roots. But uh, Thor coming out here from spec. He hasn't contributed much to the front line recently because he has been uh, damaged economic economically uh, very heavily. But, yeah, going to be uh, taking out some tier 2 mechs here. So, free metal picks, never a bad idea. And, yeah, these four Juggernauts back here is insane. Um, looks like we're actually seeing the Arbiters move in before the Juggernauts to take it. care of Thor is wild. And, yeah, I don't know what Cow God is doing back here if he's just, like, uh, tr making it painful for these guys or what. But... This just makes it all the more impressive that these guys are lasting this long. We're 52 minutes in, a game that they should have been dead like 30 minutes ago. 20 minutes ago, sorry. We now have the LOL Cannon, as it's called by the youth. I'm a youth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ragnarok absolutely just going to be shredding downtown. Um, taking out um, not too much right now, but yeah, trying to get rid of these uh, Pulsars here. Advanced Fusion Reactor also going to be going down if more stray shots miss and hit it. Yeah, there we go. Does go down. Takes out a, a ton with it. Bunch of Pulsars and stuff. And, uh, yeah. This guy honestly should have been built ages ago. Um, and there should have been Plasma Fusion or uh, plasma Deflectors ages ago as well. But what are you going to do, man? And uh, the uh, Worm Clothes team really going to have to start building. Yeah, okay. So they do have a few keepers in their actual main bases. 
but they really need to expand some protection all the way out on this front line because a lot of pulsars went down and that was like a huge defense and also natural defense too up here was fantastic to hold and now they just can't anymore because uh, they did lose that front line there so a little bit unfortunate as it were yeah you don't want these guys to go down and just like one more keeper there um, but also you want to overbuild keepers and uh, over or in, uh, overseers because one of them will not be able to have full uptime against a Ragnarok. Right? Um, looks like it... Ooh, I can't believe I missed that. I'm so mad. It was taken out by some Brave Titans from uh, KKND. So fantastic. Hopefully they do uh, launch some more rockets out and make sure this little wreckage isn't here. One, because it's a lot of reclaim. There we go. But for the most part, because it could easily be rebuilt that way. Juggernauts need to go up, man. Go forward. Looks like we had a nuke, anti nuke clash. Uh, Anak not really able to get any more kills on those nukes, but how many did they get? 199 and 153. So, very, very good uh, job with the nukes back there. Um, you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know, not as glamorous a roll. Oh my gosh. I don't know what happened back here. I'm assuming something got passed. Uh, Cow God was moving uh, grunts towards it. Uh, but yeah, Sniffa, his entire base going down there. Also, something dying back here. He said lol, so he must have moved some kind of unit back there. But yeah, that's really, really rough. Uh, Sniffa down to plus 2 metal and plus 25 energy. So, uh, really interesting there. And we actually see the Wolf Killer team actually catch up with metal, it seems. Um, if we take away the, the reclaim, which I know is a huge factor. But Sans Reclaim, I think they're sitting about the same metal. They are. Look at that. They just need to continue to hold out, man. I mean, it's not looking good for them on the front line. They pushed a lot of units in there to kill that Ragnarok, and they were taken out. Um, and now, finally, good lord, the Cow God Juggernauts are coming in. Five of these bad boys. They only have 161 kills, so you know they've just been sitting back there. Yeah, Specs Thor easily getting taken out there, and even two more. Uh, coming in behind them. So yeah, that's Yeah, kind of unwinnable <laughs> I know there are a lot of pulsars back here, but even still like uh, that is a lot of damage or not a lot Yeah, a lot of damage a lot of health uh, You know for these guys, so um, Yep, there's no no real saving grace back there. Uh, maybe a couple of nukes might help uh, you know do some damage obviously not kill them or anything but yeah, one dark not going down. And again, as they die, the defenses get weaker because their explosion just does so much damage. And uh, yeah, down to four on the main group, uh, two on the side groups. A behemoth out here uh, could put in some good damage against those juggernauts, but he is just going for uh, this guy, I guess. Yeah, second juggernaut going down in that party. And yeah, huge, uh, lots of pulsars dying there. Front line getting destroyed. Spec is now out of the game. He is like... <laughs> One tier two max and some units over there, so uh, poor guy, I guess. And attack launcher, so very nice. Attack missile launcher. And that's all the juggernauts. You know, when you do clump them, they do such damage from their own uh, explosions, but still. Well, surprisingly less effective than I thought they were. And uh, how much reclaim? Give it to me. It won't. It won't. 158,000, but I don't think that's counting all this over here. Yeah, that's just an insane amount of reclaim. Uh, 17,000.5 times 5 is like uh, 90,000 almost, like 85,000, which is insane. So, yeah. <laughs> they said trying to build up here. This is hilarious. Poor guy. He has a basilica. I don't know how is the energy for this thing. I mean, it is a slow shooter, I guess, but still. Yeah, it's minus 5,000 energy. I don't know how he has that kind of energy, but uh, I guess he has uh, 70,000 in the bank, so not a big deal. And yeah, Behemoth going to be uh, wrecking uh, these poor Titans here, slowly but surely. It's it's good more against the like, clumps of Tier 2 units, because it's basically just a Commander D-Gun um, at a certain health point. Uh, Atomic Bomber does bomb this bad boy, but takes himself out because he's a silly little boy. It's a little guy. <laughs> oh, man. What a game. What a game. Is it possible for the warm players to come back? I mean, I know they have been coming back. But, like, 
it's still at a point where like I don't know they have around the same economy but they have to make up all this ground here um, I just don't see it and we have 13 minutes left in the game so I can't imagine they can sweep in 13 minutes but I mean there are some dragons back there that could force a surrender if they do get in the back here and take out some advanced huge reactors if we have another sniffa uh, event you know all you need to do is take out one aphis right which you know saying that they have a lot of health uh, for what they are but still that's kind of all that team is resting on all any team is resting on in the late game uh, obviously we've also had some people drop uh, from the cool colors team just because I think of time so old is has this huge base um, obviously he was down here so we did just end up taking this and is now using it to his advantage I think that was actually used to be two people because there's a dark purple guy and the uh, the uh, heightened the kind of cyanish guy up there oh gosh <laughs> cataphracts absolutely ripping through those ticks man but yeah titans are still uh, you know coming up here and the fact that there's no reclaim Ah, man, that is like, it's like having an itch on your lower, or like, middle of your back that you can't quite reach. That's what this is. It's, um, I put out a video, like, what, maybe it was like four videos ago or something. <laughs> Someone was like, uh, take a, take a shot every time he says they don't have any anti-air. And I know it's, it might be frustrating for the viewer, so maybe I should stop harping on it, but like, oh my gosh, it is so frustrating. Uh, Cause it's something I would do. I, it's something I would do. So it's like e it's even worse, man. Uh, but yeah, these Titans gonna be trying to come through here. But yeah, pulsars are there's a ton, man. So we want to see some more of these. Yeah, there we go. I think when this Ragnarok comes up in a few minutes here, probably gonna be game over. Honestly, I'm surprised these guys don't have a uh, Ragnarok or a Basilisk of their own. Um, they had definitely have the economy for it, right? They're matching these guys in economy. It's a crazy thing. Two of them uh, versus like six of these guys. Um, they could easily build one, but uh, they're deciding not to. Also, we have to consider that spec might go down back here too. Uh, he is cloaked, but if uh, a unit happened to get close to him there or something silly like that, uh, he could easily go down there. Um, but yeah, the Ragnarok up to 31%. So that's kind of the win condition. Uh, the warm team has to end these end this construction here uh, before that thing goes up. Uh, five Titans actually out here from uh, ND, the big guy. Uh, Going to be trying to run through, get some damage on some kind of economy building, hopefully. Um, but yeah, one of them did just go down, and they are they're pretty... Yeah, they're not having the greatest time back here. Obviously not as much stack defense as there is uh, up in this nasty little <laughs> uh, corner up there, but still... Yeah, and all the ticks going in too. Like, they do have, it's only a little bit of damage, but still, a lot of a little is a lot. Or a medium amount, we'll say a medium amount. We'll give them that much. Uh, but yeah, they are all taken out there, unfortunately. Didn't get a ton of stuff, anything done. Um, 357,000 metal on the field. Whew, that's a lot if I've ever seen a lot. Uh, Juggernaut being uh, reclaimed here, or revived here, sorry. Um, by these guys, and a couple already revived uh, by KKNDs. So uh, I guess Cow God is feeding his enemy juggernauts. After I told him to go in, now I look like the fool. I will never be giving uh, strategical or tactical advice ever again. Thank you very much. That's the end of this show. <laughs> oh, a screen here. Very good. Ask for some units in the front. So yeah, a couple of jugs should do it. Although there, of course, are these guys. And they're actually uh, making their way downtown. One of them is. And the behemoth back here, of course. Actually, I don't know if the behemoth could yet even reach the Ragnarok, though. If we're, being, if we're being real. And I'm always being real. I don't know if we could reach that bad boy up there. Uh, but of course, we do have plasma deflectors uh, that are already up from the last time a, a cannon was up. Now, they're not as dense as, as I would like them. Pretty dense back here where this guy actually has a pretty bad line of sight, but not so dense over here. So this guy can rip through one plasma deflector. Um, not easily, it'll take a little bit, but it is definitely an achievable goal. And that guy has started to fire up, man. Gonna be uh, taking out all those uh, poor reclaim bots there. Hitting that jug as well, hitting some pulsars back here. What is this game? It's beyond no reason, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, this is a wild game. Another Ragnarok coming up is insane. And unfortunately, 
Um, no units are defending it. Nobody listened to Vied... Viedia. Viedia. There we go. Um, unfortunately. Spec's still sitting back there. I actually get a D gun off on that Ragnarok if he had to. Uh, actually, I don't know if he, he could not get up here. Uh, Commander could not. Uh, some fighters moving through here uh, by uh, ND. Going to be trying to stop the second production of another Ragnarok. Um, but yeah, Juggernaut trying to take this guy down, but he doesn't quite have the range it looks like. This guy is, is sitting pretty up here, man. That's bad. Uh, of course, we do have dragons flying in, which will be able to take this guy out. And yeah, it is an all-out assault on this Ragnarok, man. They do not want this thing coming up, and for good reason, man. It could do heavy damage. Heavy damage. Yeah, it will be going down there. Say bye-bye to the Ragnarok. And uh, Commander was revived in the back here for somebody. I think it was, yeah, ND. So Spec could, uh, you know, go deep. Nah, he can't get up there. I'm an idiot. And uh, the dragons are continuing to just fly in. I would move them back a little bit. Uh, just because, you know, they could start production on another Ragnarok and you want them out there. But tons of Titans trying to come in through the back door here. All the while we do have Dragons and Juggernauts and Behemoths pushing through for the Warm Color team. They're really committing. And these Dragons, I, I guess I will never be offering advice now. And I'm serious this time because these guys are doing tons of damage. Does manage to get that Avis uh, on that uh, base there from Viadia. And that's Viadia out of the game. A guy who contributed so much. Uh, he is taken out, man. And uh, what other kind of damage are we going to see? All we really need is all Humai to go down. Gandhi means to lose an uh, Aphis. Uh, but these guys are are dying now. The dragons are. Another Aphis going to be going down there. Does take out the last of the dragons. But still, yeah, huge damage there. Uh, and now the economy is actually in the Warp Colors team. Favor is ridiculous. It was not on my bingo uh, card sheet, actually. So, wow. Fantastic game. I think maybe that is actually the the, uh, the end game there. I was assuming this Ragnarok would end the game in the Cool Clothes team favor. You know, like these guys did good. After all this time, they did pretty well. Uh, but they were taken out in the end. But no, I think it might be a surrender for these guys back here. I mean, that's huge losses to take, man. Calgrod's base going down, the guy that made all the Juggernauts. Now he only has three Juggernauts left. Uh, and two of them are, are, you know, decently damaged versus the four Juggernauts. Five Juggernauts for the uh, Warm Colors team up here and they can't even make them. So, yeah, and scratch that, Jug just went down back here. I have no idea how that happened, actually. Yeah, wild. I think, An yeah, Anik did make this one. Um, oh, it looks like they do have Cortex bases, so those guys don't have Halos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, so they can make them, but still, that's even worse. <laughs> This is insane, right? This game is insane. Um, one of the, actually one of the craziest games I've ever seen. So, no joke. Uh, I think this might be my top one game uh, for for regular people, and definitely top one comeback I've ever seen. Um, the fact that they're able to just, you know, like brute force through all these guys. Like, no, they don't have any cheeky strats, no lucky nukes, no uh, cheeky gremlin tanks or anything like that. Just like straight powering through. The uh, Cool Colors team is crazy. And uh, they're super lucky that none of this stuff ever worked out with uh, Ol' Humai trying to make it through here. Never did end up working out for him. And now the nukes are coming out for Anik. Um, which he could nuke, like, right here. Which hopefully is what he's planning on doing. Oh, it looks like they uh, were anti-nuked, actually. So, yeah, I wasn't able to see the, the big old circles there. Oh, never mind. Was that nukes or no? No, Juggernaut's going down. Yeah, Cowgod is uh, down on two Juggernauts, and uh, this one is heavily damaged, so it's not looking good at all for these uh, Cool Color guys, man. I don't think uh, there's a second. I don't think there's a comeback for the Cool Color team. Um, maybe if they try to get some stuff through here, the Ticks are trying to make their way through, man. Uh, there's only one Titan back here, but we got oh, a ton of Rattlesnakes back there. Going to be chewing through those ticks. And, uh, of course, the Pulsars take out anything that's going to be coming through. Um, Rattlesnakes up here as well, doing their little bit of damage. He's got... This is a respectable little artillery position here, I have to say. They have uh, 147 kills. Not bad at all. Uh, anyways, I guess we'll focus on the action like some nerds. Uh, nice dig in there by Cow God. Does take out a Juggernaut. Juggernaut, uh, yeah, movement out here. We have one zombie unit left over and lost... 
Don't worry about that. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, only a few juggernauts left for uh, ND here, but uh, we have a big chain reaction here from the dragons. The dragons, yet again, are going to be uh, absolutely wrecking uh, everybody here. <laughs> Do you look at this chain reaction, man? This is this is silly. This is just silly. Yeah, fusion reactor's going down. All you need to do is take out these aphises and the game's over. I mean, the game's already over, but make it over, over. You know what I'm saying? Or these ones down here, too. All these construction turrets uh, going down, man. It's rough. It's rough out there. Yep, there's Okumai gone. Uh, only a few dragons left, and they actually will be landing. Oh, almost landing. Yeah, it's literally just this aphis. And this juggernaut's super close to dying, which is not a good thing, because if he does go kaboom... All of these guys go kaboom too. And he might actually just be able to do enough damage to it with his uh, regular guns. But uh, yeah, it is the GG from Ganymedes Means there. <laughs> it's all up to sniff it a win. Come on, man. You got it. You got it. 220 metal versus 1.2 thousand? I believe in you. No. Uh, it is over. Uh, for sure at this point. I'm surprised the GG has not been called earlier. Maybe they don't know about the GG button. But Calgon going to be going for <laughs> a juggernaut death there. Or Juggernaut D-Gun there. Very nice. Uh, so this guy's huge veterancy because I think he's killed two at this point. Two or three uh, with the D-Gun there. So yeah, Cow God is not giving up. Still two Juggernauts left in the tank. One's almost dead. One's halfway there. But obviously there's nothing you can do. Uh, I blame you, Cow God, for not giving all my stuff back. Oh, did he take his stuff? I have no idea what that. that's about. Uh, reclaim is the only reason I live. Reclaim is insane, dude. Yeah. It's wild out there. Yeah, nukes uh, from Anik going out. We have a few Titans left here from Mohumai, but uh, I mean, there's no way they're going to be able to do anything. Like, all your pass pushes have done nothing. These guys uh, aren't going to have it in them to be able to do anything. So. <sighs> Anti nuke in a tier 2 mechs. Requisition for Mohumai. The lad. The man, the myth, the legend. And this dragon just whooping on these poor sprinters down here. We have no anti-air. Yeah, where are these last commanders? So Sniffa and Cow got over okay, So all you need to do as the one close team, if people are uh, you know abusing the cloak, not abusing it, but just cloaking their commanders, so you have to find them, is just take out their energy, and they will not be able to keep up the cloak. And yeah, you can see Cow God uh, going down there, tons of veterancy, but not able to save him from uh, those Titans. Got a bit cocky. I don't know. Is he talking about the other team? I would. I think it, it's a tendency. Yeah, I wouldn't say get a good, bit cocky because they were uh, sportsman like the whole game, right? But you rest on your laurels a little bit. You already think your opponent's beaten. It's in the it's in the bag, and uh, suddenly they come back with uh, an economy that's been better than yours, like 40 minutes after they were supposed to die. So, yeah, we are reaching that uh, hour and 10 minute mark, and yeah, it's <laughs> you can see he's running out of energy here. He will be uh, going down to these dragons, most likely. And uh, and that is GG. Uh, very good game. Actually, fantastic game. And the nuke there, Fanic as well, is hilarious. Um, and Spec's commander was able to survive the whole time right over there, which is great. Um, so all the awards, except for Spec, <laughs> who's a traitor, um, go to uh, KKND. Um, so fantastic players. Uh, or, yeah, fantastic players. We had a great game. Uh, obviously, yeah. The economy from uh, ND was absolutely insane. Um, if we look at, yeah, metal used, energy used also, uh, units produced. Or we can look at active units, obviously. Um, units produced does go to uh, Julius because he had the tick farms, obviously. But then Anik and then uh, ND. Um, but really, it was a fantastic game. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If we actually want to look at the uh, aggression level, Specs was at zero. I guess if I think that does change over the over the course of the game, um, but he did very very well in the early game. Um, yeah, it was a great game. Hope you guys did enjoy it. I'll see you all later. Adios.